Hello, welcome to a live stream where I begin with a camera that is turned on by accident. Hold on one second. There we go. That's still on from last time. Or rather, it was still on from last time. It is now no longer on from last time. So, we're going to continue building the Milton Valley Railroad, as you probably already expect at this point. Let me move the microphone one second. There we go. That's a bit better. So, let's get started. Last time, uh, we started working on some of the scenery outside of this town, and actually I might be able to increase the render distance a little bit. One second. Um, that's odd. Look, uh, actually, you can see if I click the number, it isn't actually changing the number. Well, let me just reopen the settings. Oh, now it's changing the number. There we go. <laughs> right, so, yeah, because we spent the last however many streams working on this area that you can see here with the little yard here, the industrial area down here, and the main town bit up here. And all the rest outside of it was just the uh, grid texture. So last time we put in some forest along this bit, and we put in a road drawbridge over here. And so now I want to continue with these things. So one is put forest along this bit, and then on the other side of the river, and then work on some more painting. So for example, the riverbed, and let's see how far we can take this scenery, how much we can finish with it. Ah. Huh. That is odd, especially since I was using trains right before uh, I started live streaming. Like trains was already open from me working on the MVR. There we are. At least it doesn't appear to be too big of an issue. He says. Mm, that's a bit too big. Maybe half scale would work. Won't that be an issue? Sorry? Hmm? What won't be an issue? What do you mean? I don't know what you mean. The UI I meant, because it loaded very quickly. Up, oh, we're missing a little bit of water here. Let me just get my bucket and let's make an infinite water source. There we go. That went quite quickly, I think. And so has this dream. So thank you all very much for watching and <laughs> uh, thank you for continuing to watch the rest of the stream. Um, Kanga's coming too? Well, yeah, you're in chat. Oh, oh, yes. Trains, Milton Valley Railroad. Mm -hmm. That is odd, yes. Won't that be an issue, sorry? Oh, get back here. <laughs> what do you mean, get back here? I didn't go away. Actually, we can put a little bit more dirt around here. Uh, because the to kind of give a reason why the bridge already begins over here, like maybe we can make this a little bit shallower over here and create like a, a mud bank or something like that that goes all the way back there. Don't end the stream yet, thought I meant. That's okay. We all mean that sometimes. <laughs> Actually, Kango, I meant to ask you about the Minecraft streams. Is there any mod in particular 
that you maybe want to research for Monday. Oh, I thought <clears throat> I thought we removed that mod. Unsure as yet. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm just thinking that perhaps it would be a good idea to research uh, if you're interested in a mod in particular to research it beforehand, so that when the live stream starts because we've only got 120 minutes for the entire live stream, as usual, uh, that you already kind of know what, how to get started with it-ish. Okay, here I've got to be a bit careful so that I don't paint over some of the other textures I've already put down. Haha, <laughs> yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Seems like a good idea. Hmm. Actually, here I'm probably going to use the darker texture, so I don't really need to paint this over over there yet. And that mm, I'm not sure if that's a bit that looks a little too much. Okay, this is going quite well. There we are. Now let's get the darker texture. And I want to paint in the base of the river. Also, I'm going to increase the scale to half scale. Elisa, hello, welcome. I saw the pictures of the yacht. Uh, quite gunny. Hmm, let's go. Let's get the Deharka texture. <laughs> Sounds like you were trying to say Dahar Master. Hey guys, just gonna just came back from mission with Vanguard One. Vanguard One. Too tired to turn around. Sure. Dahar Master. Yes. You don't need to link me. You don't need to <laughs> give me a link. What a Dahar master is. I know what a Dahar master is. <laughs> if you, in case you're curious, why I'm actually painting this underneath, even though you won't be able to see it much, is, um, well, you might be able to see it, like this, for example. So if you go underneath. Like that, you can see, oh, there actually aren't any textures there. Let's see, where where was this part that I last painted? Sometimes if you zoom out to the map, it'll lose the spot. Like, it'll change the position it was here. Okay. Um, sure, sure. Yee, yeah, yee, yeah. But I didn't. You don't know them. They're not professionals. Uh, but they sure as hell are good. Okay. I'm glad that they are not aligned with evil. The Harmasters? Uh, no, the, the other thing, the Vanguard one. I'm assuming. Okay. There really isn't that much more to do here, I think. After we've put on all the forests and stuff like that, 
we really do just need to um, write me sleep. Oh, I thought you were gonna lurk. <laughs> sure, good night. Um, yeah, we just need to put a few more de a bit more detail around some of these industrial lots and things like that. And then this area is going to be pretty much done. Except, of course, we need to name the industries and things like that, and the actual town itself. But uh, I need to set up and name a lot of industries anyway, which I haven't done yet. Uh, so I'm probably going to go through another pass later on, <clears throat> where I'm just going to go through uh, here, industry. If you go into the find object thing and then industry, you can click through all of them. And you can see all of these multiple industries new here that I haven't actually named. And most of them I'm probably, I've probably also not set up yet. So that's all stuff I still need to do, but I'll, I'll do that later. Uh, probably off stream, because that isn't very fun. And it's also not really building the route. It's more configuring the route. And I don't want another 200 part series called configuring the Milton Valley Railroad. <clears throat> okay, now let's just dapple this paint on here. If that is the correct usage of the word, I think it is, but I don't use it often, so it may very well not be, but I think it's the correct usage of the word. Uh, these folks? No, dapple. Don't know how it's spelled, but it's it's a painting term. I think dapple. Yes, I think that's it. Or like dappled light as well. It's like spotty and things like that. I think. Like if the light is like shining through leaves, for example. I think that's one usage of the word. Okay, <clears throat> now here I need to be a bit precise. Um, actually, no, let's do the inside of the harbor last because I need to switch to a very small brush size for that. And I'm going to need the larger brush size for this. So let's finish with a large brush first and then I'm going to switch to a smaller one. That's a bit too much. Mm, nah, that's fine. Okay, just got to do the other bank. Oh, yes, and I also note I've forgot to actually smoothen this out because along here I did have the banks a little bit lower and so I still need to do that which means I might actually have to repaint some of this now that I'm thinking about it but since I've already painted so much of it I'll try to do the terraforming in a way that I don't have to repaint anything which means that I might as well paint the rest if I'm going to try for that anyway. Okay, now let's do the aforementioned terraforming. Let's see how that goes.
Yeah, I'm gonna need the flatten tool. I'm just gonna flatten a little bit along here. Yeah, that is going to make it look much nicer. The lights came on. The old neon tubes light dappled throughout the moon, throughout the moon, throughout the room, is what I meant to say. Aha, she said, as the unholstered, as she unholstered her sonic screwdriver. Ah, I see. Although dappled, I think, specifically means if it's kind of like broken up or spotted or, like, or things like that. Like light shining through um, leaves, for example. Or I think it can also be applied to like watercolors. If you like almost spray them on the canvas or something like that. Sonic? Mm, no, I never played any of the Sonic games. Although I've heard that Sonic 06 is a marvelous masterpiece which totally doesn't have any bugs or other frustrations about it. Okay, here I'm going to stop this and let it get a bit steeper because it gets a bit narrower up here. Um, I've barely played a minute of any of the of the games. Ah, you, you said Sonic. Well, yes, I read your message. Unless you meant something different. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm just joking. I know. Yeah, I'm gonna have to smoothen that out quite a bit more. Uh, I can't really do that like this. Although, let's try it. Let, yeah, let, let's let's try it with the plateau tool. Who unholsters a sonic screwdriver? Yeah, that's what I said. We need Sonic the screwdriver diver. Yes. <laughs> The screw, screw diver, diver. Hmm. I see. Actually, that could look quite nice like that. And then I'm going to have to smoothen out this slip there. Okay, and in case you couldn't tell, I'm really trying to concentrate on this because I want to get quite a bit done today. But we'll see how good that, how well that goes. Hmm. Yeah, I do need to. Should do I? Maybe not. I was thinking maybe do I need to create this kind of um, partially submerged land like that along the river but I don't think I do because the valley does get a bit narrower up here and so I think it might actually be interesting to keep this only to this area back there and keep the river a little um, narrow, narrower here. I wonder, is there a pathosphere as train, um, as the trains? I do not know. If there is, I think Alexander might have a fun time with it. Uh, some planned. Mm -hmm. Alexander the Great? Yes, Alexander the Great. Or 
or do you not know of his bathysphere exploits? Really? How come? Well, I think Alexander the Great uh, used a kind of bathysphere made of glass to uh, have a look underwater because he wanted to, uh, well, he saw himself as king of pretty much everything, so he wanted to see what underwater was like, and um, so he did. And reportedly he saw some really scary things which made him not want to go back underwater, if I remember correctly. Kango does not know. Whereabouts was that? Uh, I don't know. If you look up uh, Alexander the Great Bathysphere, then you should be able to find something. Might not be related, but you'll you should find something. <laughs> okay, like that. Hmm. Is that enough? Well, we'll see when I yeah I think if I when I, when I put these trees around, that should look good. All oh, right, sounds like a children's book. Alexander the Great and the Horrifying Bathysphere. Well, the bathysphere itself wasn't horrifying. It was what he saw on the outside of the bathysphere that was horrifying. Apparently. Okay, now... Actually, should I use the dark texture or the light one? I'm tempted to go for the lighter texture in here. Simply because... You'd actually be able to see. Although, let's, let's give a comparison. Mm. Actually, maybe the darker one would fit a bit better. Mm. Yeah, let's go with the dark one. Fourteen eighty-six. Um. Um. I think that that specifically talks about I'm not sure that that talks about the actual event because Alexander the Great did not live in the 1400s uh, it just says miniature uh, from a French manuscript of Roman de Alexander, um, whatever. Unless it means 1400s BC, but even then I'm not sure how accurately that would line up, I don't know. Because did Alexander live in... Actually, was it uh, post-Bronze Age collapse? I think it... Oh, I don't know now, actually, thinking about it. Because Alexander did live fairly early. Um, definitely before Hellenistic, Hellenistic Greece. Because he was king of, uh, well, Mycenae, I believe. That's pronounced correctly. We'll see. I obviously don't know. I'm obviously not very confident about that information. <laughs> um. Ah, at 500 BC, uh, Scilias, a sculptor, and his daughter Cyana Sa were Greek divers who worked recovering treasure for the Persian king Xerxes Xerxes um, breath holding breath holding Xerxes wouldn't let them return to their country so and so seizing an opportunity they found his 
fleet in difficulty, cut the anchors un underwater, and caused a great catastrophe. Sayana was the first woman diver, well, first working woman diver. Uh, divers worked at bringing back cargoes uh, from sunken ships. Holding their breath, they could stay underwater for around two minutes. Um, I can't help but notice that that does not involve a bathysphere. <laughs> okay, I think that's quite nice. Now let's get to work on the forest because I want to I want to do more painting along here and put other objects like the trees and things like that. But first, I want to put in the forest so I get a better idea of what it'll actually actually look like. Oh, uh, true. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'll paint it underneath later. And so, seizing an opportunity, they found his fleet in difficulty, cut the anchors out of water, and caused a great catastrophe. Um, yes? What about that? And so, seizing an opportunity, they found his fleet. His f oh, his feet. Ah, <laughs> there we go. His feet. They found his feet. Um, I see. Okay, I'll just uh, paste this over the river as well, because I want this to go, the forest to go all the way down to the shore, so I'm going to need... Uh, the tree's going down there anyway, so I might as well place them all the way down. You might be thinking, that's a lot of trees. And you would be right, that is a lot of trees. Fortunately, uh, all the 3D trees here have billboarding, which means that they are 2D trees when looked from looked at from a bit further away. And if it runs smooth on my computer, especially while I'm streaming, then it'll run smooth on other people's computers as well. I do need to bring this up a little bit further because otherwise you'd see the edge of the forest. At least I'm not placing this with the copy paste tool in add mode. The forest, it's a good thing it isn't OMSI 2. Ha! <laughs> Imagine how long this would take in OMSI 2. Actually, don't, you might go mad. Oops, too late, I, as I can see. Revert! Revert! <laughs> I think you get you got the Cyberman uh, quote a bit wrong there, Kango. Madrona, um, I don't think it would take that long, Madrona, to build a forest. Isn't it done with brushes in that? Nice. I also thought of it. Yeah. Hmm. It is. And in Train Simulator, you would use asset blocks for this, where you would uh, select an area, like with a, a polygon tool or something like that, and then you could specify which assets it should be filled with randomly, and the ratio of those assets and how dense they are. And you could manipulate it dynamically. Like I would just have an edge here, like a point there and a point back there and a point back there. 
and I could just move this point over like that, just from, from here over there, and then all this area would be filled with forest, or I could move back this way, and then all of this area would be free. And that's a really nice way of, of doing it. And I don't know if something similar is in TRS-22. I've not played with that. I don't own a copy. But I know that they've got some uh, nice and shiny new features for placing assets. Uh, you paint uh, uh, distributions, almost said disturbances, you paint distributions which are essentially a group of assets, uh, a group of objects which you can define yourself, like distribution 01 could contain pines 01, herbs, mushrooms, birch 02. Uh, 02? Birch 02. Not sure I'm familiar with that particular molecule. Uh, and then you can dip the brush in it and go wild. Uh, hopefully a bit more wild than the uh, so-called update. Uh, distributions. Mm -hmm. Uh, which update do you reckon will be more wild? 1.19, 1.20. Well, considering the little amount, the the bits of information they gave on the 1.20 update, uh, they didn't name it yet, I think, but they gave information on it, and by the looks of things, it's probably gonna be around the same, actually, if the stuff they're showing us they've shown us today is the extent of what they'll add in it. Um, because from what I've seen, they're going to add a new wood type, which is based on, well, it's, it's bamboo. So you'll be able to craft bamboo into uh, blocks and slabs and stairs and uh, doors and all that stuff. Also boats, which are rafts. Well, they, they've got to have a raft um, equivalent, which is basically just a boat without the sides. Um, and they're going to add camels to the desert. And... Oh yes, they're going to add another kind of hanging sign as well, which basically they're going to add a, a hanging sign for each wood type, and hold on, is there anything else that I saw that they're going to add? Well, th yeah, well, the mob vote result is the, the sniffer, which if they tie it into a uh, paleontolo paleontologically oriented update, then uh, that would make me quite happy. But I doubt they will, considering that it could have just as easily been a, di a different mob that won. So I doubt that. But I also don't know if that mob is going to be added in the 1.20 update or in a future one from that. Um, I don't know. So did they say they were adding anything else in that preview? Um, I don't recall. Uh, well, bamboo wood, can I wait? Oh, rafts. I've not yet seen the 1.20 news from today. Birch ladder? Birch chest? What do you mean birch?
Did I accidentally say birch? I thought I said bamboo. Uh, actually, what I'll do is I will paste in most of the texture underneath with the copy paste tool. Minecraft 1.2.1 Archeo and Paleontology Archaeology and Paleontology <laughs> Yeah Tell you what, I'm just gonna repaint the rock bits along the um, along the road there on the cutting. Oh, will we get the bundle? I have no idea. I don't think they showcased it, but the thing is, I think that. Uh, 1.20, I'm not sure if it'll come out this year or maybe next year, I don't know. Although they did decide to apparently make the content of the update that they've got so far available in snapshots already, uh, as opposed to having to wait until the first snapshots start coming out, which I, uh, I don't agree with that decision because for quite uh actually before i gave my reasons for it kango do you agree with that decision i just thought it'd be nice to have those oh yeah definitely oh right oh hmm oh hmm Okay, either you're thinking or you're typing. <laughs> okay, now let's smoothen out the edge of the textures here. Edge of the forest. Dot dot dot. Ah, you're typing, I see. I am unsure. I mean, if the peeps get the features already, they can already send feedback and suggestions Mojang's way. Hmm. What is your reasoning for not agreeing with it? I mean, if the update, the content of the update, is malleable enough to allow community feedback to not only fix bugs and things like that, but to actually dramatically change the features themselves and or add or remove features, then yes, I can agree with that. If then, if they release an update and it's like, okay, here are some things, play around with them. Are these things things you like? Or what would you change? What would you add? What would you maybe remove? I that could be interesting, but I don't think that's how Mojang are doing it, considering that they never did it that way before. My reasoning for not liking it is that for quite a few years now, Minecraft's Minecraft has been getting periodic updates. Um ah, then why do you reckon they're doing it? Oh? Yeah, well, Minecraft has been getting periodic updates, usually one or two a year. And the communi Minecraft's community, I feel, is kind of split into two main uh, groups. The first are people who are into playing modded Minecraft, 
and they usually stick with one version of Minecraft that's reliable and that already has a lot of mods for it. Uh, mostly 1.12.2 as far as I'm aware, but maybe there's another version, more up-to-date version for that. I know that 1.7.10 was the previous version before 1.12.2 that was used for a lot of modding. Uh, and for those people, the new updates that come out aren't really that uh, important, I would say, because, well, the mods aren't going to work for those updates anyway, for the new versions. At least, not, at least not at the beginning. And then the other kind, which I believe is the overwhelming majority, are the players who consume, who play, consume Minecraft, and for whom the updates have kind of refreshed the game. So they play Minecraft, play Minecraft, play Minecraft, and then because the updates have been so regular, I think people have been people who play vanilla have gotten used to those updates and to the new features and fresh stuff that comes with it. So they play Minecraft, play, 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 play with the new features, and then they get bored of the new features, and then the new update comes out, and here we have new features, and then you play those, then they play those new features until they get bored of them, at which point the next update's already there. I mean, just looking on YouTube for, b before today, how many videos there were, uh, I didn't watch any of them, but just looking the, the, through the listings, how many videos there were about, oh, Minecraft 1.20, uh, uh, leaks or confirmed features, even though they weren't confirmed, but, you know, clickbait uh, stuff. And um, theories about what the update could be and what, what theming and what mobs will be added and what the name is and stuff like that. Like really capitalizing on a lot of people being that interested in what the new stuff is. So you can see how the community has, at least the, the vanilla community, has kind of been trained or conditioned to enjoy Minecraft because of the new features that they keep adding. So if you take that as a base, that kind of community, then if you announce a new update, people are going to be excited for those new features. Even if they're only quite minor features, people are still going to be excited for them. Which means that that excitement has to last until your next update is ready to be announced. Because those new features are what, your, are what Mojang have focused their vanilla community on. So now we've got this update uh, announced and we've got these exciting new features like uh, camels and previously what Mojang did is they worked on the update, worked on it, worked on it, worked on it until they were ready to release snapshots, then re started releasing snapshots and then a couple months later the update released. That way, for all of that development time, nobody could play with those features. So the excitement was still there, the anticipation. But now that they're making them available right away, at least in the current state, I believe that people will get bored of them much more much quicker. I think people will get bored of those features before the update even comes out. Because now you've just because that that window of time of interest that Mojang had until they have to have the next update ready, they've just pushed back by releasing those features right away. So I think that that's a mistake because then I think what will happen is 
people will be excited now. They start, they'll start playing with these new features. And then unless Mojang is going to introduce more and more new features of this update as the process continues, people are going to get bored of those. And then by the time the update releases, it's going to be, basically it's going to be an old hat. People aren't going to be excited about it anymore. And then when this update 1.20 released, and people are already going to be speculating what 1.21 will be, and what features that might add, because 1.20 is already old news. Everybody's already been playing with it. So, yeah, that's my reasoning. I hope I've explained that adequately. I mean, if my, if, if, like, if what you said is, if, if what you said were the case, that they make this more open development, accepting more feedback from the community to not only fix bugs or do minor changes, but to use that information for the actual features of the update and what those features are and what shapes they take, then yes, involving the community like that can be good. It can be, not necessarily, because again, that might be a bit tricky because if you have a community that is that big, then people are going to have different views on the features. And you might say, okay, well, here's a feature we have. Uh, are you happy with it? Some people say yes. Other people say no. Here's how you can do it better. Only the people who say here's how you can do it better are probably going to be hundreds or thousands of different here, this is how you can do it better. And then trying to manage all of that and balancing that, then you're going to upset some people who are looking forward to having input into Minecraft's development and who then either get ignored or actively gone against in favor of another part of the community's feedback, which, I mean, you can already see a tiny bit of that in the mob votes because um, uh, of how much talk there was about Oh, how could that mob win? Well, the others are so much better and stuff like that. And some other people say, no, this mob is great. I'm glad it won. And imagine that, not just about one mob, but about the, all of the features of an entire update. So you can see how if you have an audience that is that big, you can run into issues with that. So I think it can be pulled off, but Mojang would have to be quite clever about it. Um, the other way I can see such an early release of features working is if the features that are currently available are only a fraction of the stuff that will be available at the, uh, at the release date. And that from now until the release date, maybe every couple weeks or something like that, they release another preview or snapshot featuring more completely new features that had not been announced before. That way, um, that way you would keep people much more invested in the update cycle and the new features and things like that. Um, and then you would obviously have to keep the biggest changes till the end like the changes that are pe people are going to be most excited about because that way that excitement will last the longest after your actual release date although on the other side on the other <laughs> on the other side of of the coin if you keep those if you if you give access to those features right when you announce them that means that your um, main big features your main big exciting features are going to have to be uh, kept a secret from the community until the update is pretty much about to come out, which isn't exactly great for uh, keeping interest in the update going. 
because for example now with the update that's been just announced if if you if you just say okay update has camels and bamboo blocks and oh we've got a new type of sign you can have then some people might not be that interested in it if you were already if at this point you were already planning to add for example i don't know <laughs> a new prehistoric dimension shall we say tying into the archaeology and paleontology and stuff like that and you already know that you're going to do that then i'm not sure that it would be helpful to keep that a secret and development on it a secret until much much later in development because then you kind of have to keep it like that if you want to keep interest high after release but if you do that then well for one thing you could have kept interest much higher throughout the entire development process if you hadn't already given people access to all your stuff and you could have also had community feedback on it for a much longer period of time so while I think on the surface this decision tailors more towards a consumer based market where where the updates are for my like because i think the updates for minecraft players for quite a few of the well actually now that i'm thinking about it, probably most of the vanilla players who actually follow the updates and things like that is a bit like a regular hit in a way like a maybe a bit similar to an addiction almost where you need another hit every once every ever so often to keep yourself interested or into it or addicted to it it's not addicted i think addicted is too strong a term for it but uh yes yeah, so if you're gonna do if you're going to do that on on the surface releasing those updates right away giving people access to it might seem like a great idea but i think in the long run it's actually going to be more damaging so what do you think now kango uh, let me read all that stuff Why do you reckon they're doing it? Oh, top 50 features we might see in Minecraft 1.20. Must watch. Yeah. Like that? Ah, minor features. But yeah. So, no, we... So, no, we have these exciting new features announced. Like camels. <laughs> no or now? Yeah. I mean... Yeah. The reason why I said the like camels like that in a bit of a sarcastic way is because while I do think that more making the biomes feel more alive, more wild, ahem, is a great idea. Like for example, adding fireflies and maybe crickets or adding a, what I would love is if they added a, uh, like a colorful bird mechanic where the same thing like the, the tropical fish work where it randomly puts together a mob based on one or two different shapes, like sizes or, or, or of the wings and stuff like that, maybe, or head shape, and then gives it random colors and random patterns, like it works with the tropical fish. And then it spawns those in a, a groups of a few uh, mobs at a time. And then that could be so great for adding not only immersion, but also making it feel more alive. So, making the biomes feel more alive, great. Doing it by adding a camel mob only, although we don't know if it's only. I mean, this was only the first announcement. There could be many more features planned for this update, I don't know. But from what we know now, I think that that's really not enough. It really feels a bit like the wild update over again. And so that's why I said like camels. Um, especially since uh, we already have camels, the, the alpacas. Uh, because alpacas and llamas are a kind of camel. If I remember correctly, hold on. Let me quickly research that because if that is not correct, then one second. 
Um, here we are. Alpaca. The alpaca is a South American... No, camelid. There we go. Camelid mammal. It is a type of camel. I was correct. Haha. <laughs> yeah, so we've already got a camel in-game. They're just going to add another variety of camel. So that there's another mob in, in the desert. I mean, we've already got bunnies in the desert. And they don't add that much immersion. They don't make it that feel that much alive, more alive. And I don't think adding a camel will help that much. Um, and the fact that they announced the camel as one of their big features, or I say big features, as one of the features that came with the first information we got of the update, leads me to believe that it is either one of their big features, or that the other stuff they have planned, they are actually going to announce much later on because of the way they've decided to give players access to the update so that they are actually keeping the big stuff for later on so that interest will still be high which they may very well do but I think that if they've thought that much about it I'm not sure that they would go with this model unless it was ordered from their Microsoft overlords um, which it may very well have been, to be honest. Uh, but who knows? Ah, I see Charlie as well. Mojang will see what happens. Or they might actually do that. Because it's 1.20. They might introduce much more features. Hmm, true. True. But you'd think that if they... I mean, to me it feels like a bit of a contradiction. Because on the one hand, they're giving players access to these features right away. Which the only reason that I can think of why they would want to do that is if, they want, if they're desperate to have player... Uh, excitement about the update high right from the beginning which leads me to believe that they don't have anything big planned for it because if they had anything big planned for it then they could have just kept with the old uh, formula of doing stuff and just announced the big thing to keep people excited because if it is something like adding a prehistoric dimension or adding in archaeology which which people have um, wanted ever since it was first announced in 1. for 1.17 that would keep people excited. That would make people excited. So much more than saying, okay, here we have some minor features, but you've got access to them right away. So, yeah, to me that would feel like a bit of a contradiction if they actually had big stuff planned. Um, which, lead, yeah, which leads me to believe that they don't. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they do actually have big stuff planned. Maybe we are finally getting the archaeology update. Because they haven't actually announced the name of the update as far as I'm aware. Which actually does hint at it being a bigger update. Because they have now... They have given us a little bit of the content, but they deliberately haven't told us what it's called yet. Which does... Yeah, which is a hint that it is going to be something big like the archaeology update or something like that. But then that contradicts the point of why haven't they just announced it if they want to keep people excited. Yeah. Maybe it's got to do with internal politics. Who knows? Um, yeah, true. The i the idea would work a lot better if it were still if it still was a small indie title. You mean with the community feedback? I mean, I think that that can still work, even with a big title like Minecraft. 
I think it can work. I think it's just tricky to pull off. You would have to... You would have to kind of limit... You would have to kind of probably go through like phases almost where at least they were just off the top of my head. I, I don't know if this would actually work in practice or if there are big flaws, gaping flaws in it. But I think that it could work if you went through phases where in the beginning it's like, okay, here we're going to make a new update <clears throat> and you can submit your suggestions and we are then going to choose which ones we want because that way the community would still have an impact on what is going to happen but you don't feel like you have a direct you don't have direct control over it because i think that that's maybe an issue with the mob wo mob votes because with the mob votes because the, you as a player can vote on it, it feels like you've got control over it, which incidentally is also maybe a flaw with how voting works in general in other contexts as well, but I think that's a topic for another time. Uh, so yeah, but if you said, okay, you can suggest topics for what the update's gonna be like, and then we're going to look through all of them and we're going to pick our favorite, then it's still clear that Mojang is in control of it and the community has input in it. I think that maybe voting on those things at all would be a mistake because then even if you say, okay, you can suggest stuff and then you can vote on it and then we'll choose our favorite, well, the voting wouldn't matter in that case. Then it would just be an illusion where... Uh, because if you're not going to consider how many players want it. So yeah, I think just suggesting stuff, and if there are duplicates, I would remove the duplicates. Um, yeah, and then Mojang choose. And then from that point forward, you could do that again, where you can say, okay, this is going to be the topic of the update, do people have suggestions for features? And then you would get thousands of suggestions and then you'd have to sift through all of them and pick what suggestions you think would work best with all the other features of Minecraft and say, okay, these are our favorites, these are the ones we've picked. And that way you wouldn't get large portions of the community feeling uh, ignored because like with the mob votes where so many players vote on this mob and then it doesn't get chosen, it feels like, well, I feel like my contribution is now has been ignored, but if it's with the favorites, then that's already a set thing that we're just asking for suggestions. We're not actually giving you control over what will and will not be in the game. And I think that that could be a good way of handling that with with a big game with a big title like Minecraft if you did want to include the community in the actual development process of an update um, but that is obviously not what Mojang are doing so uh, yeah, I don't think it has. To, it would have to be a, an indie title or anything like that for for that sort of thing to work. Can go. Uh, I'll continue to rechat once I've finished painting this bit. And yes, I am painting this as rock because this has been um, taken away. The, like the soil and rock has been taken away for the road. So this would be bare rock. Mm. 
yeah, I think something like that's probably best. And that's a little too much. I'm going to take that away a little bit. There we are. That already looks much nicer. Yeah. Imagine if they did a mine con every month. <laughs> you mean where they just take people's money without actually delivering anything? Hmm. Ha, huh, yeah. They probs announce the new dimension in December next year. Ha. Huh. And the game will release in January. Update 1.20. <laughs> oh, will it? Will it? Or, or is it like, is that actual information you've just looked up? Or is that uh, just part of your fiction? The updates are fodder for the players, maybe? Uh, now, not, no, yes. Yes, tropical bird, yeah. Uh, it's like camel in it. Well, <laughs> tropical birds, I do not think, are like camels. Although I could be wrong. <laughs> but no, um, I don't mean tropical bird, I mean specifically like colourful bird. Because I would want them to spawn just in natural, in forests and dark forests. And you could have different weights for the different uh, features. Like maybe in a dark forest, you would be more likely to get uh, birds that more closely resemble like corvids. So that's crows and ravens and jackdaws and those kind of birds. Whereas maybe in beach biomes you would have a tendency for more to have more whites in them so that they maybe resemble gulls or seagulls a little bit more. And then in forests you could have just uh, color but maybe a little bit more brown tendencies. And then in a jungle you could have just all the colors you want maybe or something like that. Then you could still have it be colorful bird and only one mob, using the system that already exists, mind you, they've already done all the work to actually make, and just one mob, and it would add so much to it, but I don't think they're gonna do that. Uh, yeah, should have uh, added a Gila monster. <laughs> uh, if they did do that, then I would not suggest touching it. Yikes, too true. Yeah, I can definitely see that. I have no idea what that's referring to anymore. Maybe we were all mistaken all along. Who knows? Mojang? Maybe. Uh, no time indeed. Oh, hello. Uh, you've caught us in a Minecraft Mojang um, discussion. Not actually talking about many of the features, but more about the the change of how they're going to do the up, like how they're going to present the updates, make them available to players, if you couldn't tell. Yeah, I can't really see them having 1.20 essentially be just another minor features update because for this one I say they really need to notch it up a bit. Ha ha ha. I get the the pun. Yeah, I get to get to. I guess here's some new stuff. Feel free to vote on it. And then we'll choose our favorite. Yeah, that probably wouldn't work great. Uh, great place name. Bear Rock. <laughs> Isn't it called that? Mine Con? Yeah, it is Mine Con. Yeah, fiction, fiction. Yes, more saturated colors in jungle, etc. Why not just call it bird then? Mm, because you've already got other birds. We've got the parrots and we've got the chickens. So, <laughs> for the same reason why they called it a tropical fish, I think. Uh, as opposed to just fish, because we've got other fish. Right, so... How does that look? Uh... Actually, that looks all right. It actually looks all right. Although... Do I want this much space here, or do I want the forest to already come down to the shoreline here? I think it would look better if the forest came down to the shoreline there already. So, let's do that. So like up to there. It just makes it more more interesting as you come around the corner. Um, why not just correct? Right, uh, looks lovely, but corvids wouldn't be too colorful. Hmm. True. Well, I guess it depends on. Actually, let me put the bridge on the temp locked so that I don't accidentally replace over it. Uh, temp locked. Yeah, it depends on which way you're talking. If you're talking about 
subtractive colors, then corvids would be among the most colorful birds in existence. If you're talking about additive colors, then yes, they would not be very colorful. Mm, shoreline, yes, yeah. Mm. Or if it just give the internal name of bird, and if it's randomly assigned, generate names for the species. Mm. I don't think so, because uh, Minecraft players usually call the mobs by the mob name, like the name that it says on the spawn egg, for example. So for the tropical fish, they are like when they spawn in game and you like you pick them up with a bucket for example then it will tell you what the randomly generated name of that species is if it is indeed a randomly generated one i know there are a few preset ones like clownfish i think is one um and yet minecraft players still call them tropical fish because that's what the mob is that's how it behaves that's the egg like the the, the spawn egg of it it's just variations of that mob, even if in survival, it ju it says the different species names. Um, so I think colorful bird or, sm or, or something like that, or maybe small bird would work better. Um, or if they let the player's name the generated species as part of the archaeology update. Uh, why would that be specifically part of an archaeology update? <laughs> Surely that would be part of an etymology update. <laughs> Could you imagine that? An etymology update in Minecraft. Imagine if that's what the big the big secret is that if they are holding a big secret, like 1.20, the etymology update. <laughs> uh, that would be funny. Wait, wait, it actually generates names for tropical fish? Yeah, if you pick them up in a bucket, it'll generate names like yellow dotty back or, or something like that. Or blue tang. Um, uh, paleontology. Well, still, wh why? If it's paleontology, then it would be referring to ancient life, not modern life. Isn't it, if it's modern, isn't it called zoology? Isn't that the the thing you're looking for? The word you're looking for? I just thought name species and paleontology. Hmm. X X D uh, X D D D D X D D D D D. Yes. Ah. Yeah. You're right. I am. Ah. Well, that's a lovely change. Okay, now let's paint in a little bit more of that cliff texture that I had in here originally, but then I had to paint over, well, I say had to. I painted over with the other texture so that I get it, make it a bit easier. Will the shoreline receive the bush treatment? Um, some places yes, other places perhaps not. The thing is, it does look quite empty when you look at it from here like that. But that's just because there are no shadows on. With shadows on, all these, you, you, I don't think it may not be that necessary. I think, but we'll see. Or on the map, maybe. 
I mean, I am going to add some of those uh, blueprint, those 2D blu blueprint, JVC blueprint trees along the shore over here. Also along this entire stretch, going back here. Actually, did I paint underneath the forest over here yet? Uh, the answer is yes, but it's not the right texture. Hmm. So let's change that. Ah, actually, <laughs> I got sidetracked and didn't even finish deleting the trees along here. This already feels much nicer, doesn't it, now that we've got some actual trees around the area. <laughs> Actually, hold on. You might here now. You can listen to the clicks. Now you can listen to the clicks in a bit more, uh, with a bit more volume. And each one of those clicks is placed with care and precision. Yes, care and precision, indeed. And yes, it has to be pronounced that way. You can't just be care and precision, it has to be precision. There we go. A little bit more over here. Okay, um, yep, that looks quite good, I think. And uh, yeah, that, that's quite nice. Uh, actually, let's let's save and then let's do the same thing over here. As ASMR, shout out, tears 19, track while clicking in 10 hours, great for meditation. <laughs> Doctor, dentist, waiting room, and falling asleep. I see. <laughs> Ten forty nine seconds. Hmm. I mean, if you want, for the next trains stream, I could just turn off my face cam, put the microphone right by the trackball, and just not say anything for the duration of it. So it's literally just the sound of me clicking. And the thing is, only people who've watched this live stream all the way through to this point, would actually uh, comprehend what's going on. Everybody else would just be like, wait, what's wrong with your... Like, clearly the microphone is working, we're hearing the clicking, so why aren't we hearing the voice? Uh, but why not face cam? Well, you don't need a face cam if I'm not communicating. Okay, now we just need to paint in this. Actually, I'm going to paste in the colors first. The textures first, I mean. Uh, X, D, D. X, D, 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 D. I see. Or you could use Kango Cam and move it so viewers see your hand. Um, I mean, if people really want a close-up of my hand while I'm building stuff in trains, 
Uh, sure, I guess. But I will not put on nail varnish. Um, yeah. Okay. Now let's just apply some finishing touches here. And yes, I will go back over with a grass texture to get rid of some of the excess forest texture along here. Okay, now let's do the thing that I just said. Okay, I think there's a little, yeah, there's a little thing we need to clear up here. Although, I think it might be better if I use this texture instead, because uh, that's most of the texture we're using here, I think. Although, no, the other one, the darker one, that's the one I need. This one. And then I can put on a little bit of the other texture over the top of that if I need to. Which actually I may not need to because that's a thing I had, right? I had this texture along the edge of the forests, didn't I? I might have. Let's have a look. I think that was a thing. Which if they had different texture brushes? Hmm. <laughs> that could be fun. And no, I did not. At least not here. I had it down where the, the water accumulated at the bottom, that's right. Even up here though? Hmm, yes, even up here. Interesting. Like think like think Pixel Meta Pro Photoshop Unity. Yes, I know what you mean. That would be fun. Ah, actually, I quite like that up there. Okay, so next, uh, the road. Uh, let's paint it on some grass over the top, and then uh, I may go along. With, uh, with a grey kind of gravel ballast texture. Just so that it's a bit easier to see from further away when the splines haven't like properly loaded in yet. Uh, good idea, thank you. Uh, let's see, from where should I start? Probably from here. I shall do it from a little bit further away, that way I have more um, space to see what kind of curve is coming ahead so that I can keep the mouse pointer 
kind of centered on the road. Ice and this I think is getting back into 10 meter baseboards, which is fine because this is supposed to be quite far away. And then this I'll just carry on straight along this way. Why not? That way if you're out, zoomed out like that, you can see it continuing that way a bit. Then we'll do the same thing for the road over here because we haven't done that. I haven't done that. I mean, you haven't done that either. So I guess we haven't done that is technically correct. Or rather, ne I mean, neither of us would also work. Knee, haha. <laughs> Don't want to put too much along this bit. Just a little bit of it though. Just a little bit along here. And then same underneath here. Actually, yeah, I do quite like that. Ooh. Ooh. Put a stop sign on that intersection by the bridge. Um, perhaps. We'll see. That might add quite a bit, actually. We'll see what it looks like. Probably without, because if you're approaching the intersection, you would have already had to go around this curve, which means you already have to be paying attention, otherwise you would have fallen off or hit the rocks, I guess. Okay, and then this just kind of goes in like that. Well, is that a bit too much in some of these areas? Not entirely sure. I think maybe a little bit here. A little bit here and there. Although if you're up here and looking at it from an, a shallow angle like that, I think that's fine. Okay, uh, let's see. Maybe the yellow one would be quite nice. Um, if I can find it. I think there was one here. Was it this intersection that had it? Maybe, who knows. No, that was the red one. Hmm. There we go, that's the one I meant. And let's also add one over here. Why not? Since we're already doing it. Uh, right. Yeah, we need to also put this crossing in, but I'm going to do that later. Because in this stream, I really want to focus on getting in more of the uh, big scenery elements.
Ah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Glad you agree. Also, yes, I do realize that this road is going to require some of that texture underneath it as well. Also, I may have to play around with this a little bit more because I realize now that since we have this entire section covered in this longer grass, we may need to do something similar along here, at least for, for a section of it. Maybe something like this. Will you grass sedge spline? Will you use grass grass sedge spline? Spline. Um, maybe. We'll see. Uh, I know I said um, broad strokes, and this might be considered detailing a bit, but this won't. This bit won't take long. Yeah, I think this will add a lot. Mhm, mm I agree. I agree, and so I'm going to say, uh huh. Mhm. Mm Good morning. Hello. 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 Good morning. Hello. <laughs> you get it. I know you like bus games, Kango. Um, that looks almost right. I need to leave some gaps in between here because actually the other grassy area we've made isn't fully covered in grass. There are some gaps. So let's just make a few of those along here. Uh, no, not that one. It would be this one. Something like that. Yeah, that looks much more like the other area. Although, even this is maybe a little bit much. Something like that, perhaps. Uh, isn't fully grassed up yet? Mm. Yeah, yeah. I see. Uh, what's next? Uh, Alright, the texture on the road. A good, a good, a good, a good day to you. <laughs> also, I may need to do a little bit more uh, texture work on the edge of the forest there on the left. Specifically this little corner here. I think that would look better like this. Also, I think, yeah, we are going to need a little bit of a rock texture along this bit where it's cut through slightly. Uh, ooh, along here as well. Mm, no, I'm going to use the other one, the one that has a lower scale already set. 
I might as well actually start up here. And yeah, you can see the difference of a 10 meter and 5 meter grid size. Maybe search for herb. Um, I don't know. Is he missing? No, herb. Because that is actually a man's name. Yeah, there are people called Herb. Like Herb Peters? Um, I don't know if I like him, I've never met him before, but similar in the naming convention, yes. Herb Watson Peters? <laughs> Something like that. Okay, so... Um, yeah, I do really quite like this. And the good thing is that this is pretty much exactly how I envisioned this area to begin with. So the next thing to do uh, is probably putting or continuing this uh, these either power lines or telegraph lines along and actually we do also need to texture this area here. Um, although hmm not entirely sure because we did consider, we do, did talk about perhaps having another little bit of urban area in here, filling this bit in. I like so that there are more houses along here, going up to maybe around there. And I think that might be a good idea because at the moment the town area, the, the residential area, does seem very small, even though it's technically supposed to continue on back here and stuff like that. Mm, it does actually look quite small, at least from above. If you're down here, maybe not so much, but I think I might do that later, which means I'm not going to texture this bit yet. And actually, so that I remember to do that, remembering to do that, I'm going to put down a very basic road. It just kind of goes in something like this so that I do not forget like I said uh, although I will put in one more bit like this again this is just a reminder essentially this isn't necessarily going to stay like this Yeah, and then we'll yeah. And then having houses along here with a few more street connections, I think is going to add quite a bit. Um, yeah, that would be great. Push pin, do that. Mm, I think this is fine. Yeah, but are those roads really that curvy generally in the U.S.? Um, I think it depends on the area. Let's have a quick look. Um, okay, so let's have a look here. No, look at how curvy all these roads are here. Do you see that? I mean, just look at that. So, I mean, this is pretty much the opposite of a grid layout. Look at all that. <laughs> 
such curviness. Right, so now that that's sorted, um, you've got the 2044 message. Oh, that mm, it's got the. Uh, it dis it keeps disabling the timestamps for the messages. Hold on. Oh, amazing! Ooh, I have an idea. Allotments. I know I did read that, but I'm not sure if allotments are really that big of a thing, especially since all all of these properties have a lot of space on them. Um, U.S. XD. I've got a feeling we're not in Haddencourt anymore. Um, what do you mean? Oh, we were near Birmingham all this time. Yeah, see, that's the confusion. I thought we were near Birmingham, but we were actually near Birmingham. Uh, sorry about that confusion. Uh, yeah, now let's just have a look over here. Let's move it like that so that you can see part of the coordinates up there. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, looking at like this suburban area here, I mean, this is relatively flat, so you've still got straight lines going across. Um, but you've still got curvy roads connecting places. Maybe if I go into a bit more mountainous area. Mm, let's see up here, maybe. Yeah, sort of like this area. Like this actually looks quite similar to what I'm building, I think. We've got kind of these circular roads. If you if you if you look at it from above, you can see kind of a grid over on the left and then you've got these circles kind of cut in between and here you can see um, you'd kind of see a circle coming around back there with roads between or stuff like that and then if you go over to the side a bit more then you do have the grid over here similar to how you have the grid over here also look there's a railroad ah yeah, I think that while it's not too common in the US, definitely not, I don't think it's that uncommon either. Like, for example, over here, you can see how squiggly this road is going along this way and then back that way, connected with these other roads. And then this little circle going, like, you see this little crescent up in the corner there going around. Um... Just put a few US flags, um, but allotments are fun, yeah. I, oh, wait, before that, uh, one singular viewer. Hey, I live there. Ah, yeah, I get you. But allotments are fun. Uh, just put a few US flags in there and it'll be fun. <laughs> street view, mailboxes. Street view? Why would street view be important? Wait. Petticoat Junction? Isn't that a... Hold on. That seems familiar. Jackson River Sea. Wait a minute. Why does that seem familiar? Hold on. Actually, I'm gonna quickly look that up because that seems familiar. One second. Oh, here we go. Petticoat Junction is an American television sitcom that originally aired on CBS from the 60s. I've, ne I've not seen this, but I must have heard about it somewhere. Interesting. Is there any indication of where this was filmed? Um... History cast, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. Might be more 
information about that on IMDb or something like that. Hmm. But it does seem like that's probably, like this area over here is like a reference to that series probably then. And actually there is a, a petticoat Um, where was it? Did I not read Trail? Oh no, it's Jackson River Scenic Trail. There we go. Petticoat Junction, Jackson River Scenic Trail. There we go. That's what I was reading. Uh, oh, that's the parking lot. Interesting. It's a parking lot with a trail map and a trash can. Lovely. Hold on, is there a... Uh, a site to... Nope, they don't have a website here. That's unfortunate. Like, or is this town relevant to, to the series? Clearwater Park, it's called. Actually, hold on, let me quickly switch back over. Because there were some... If we go down here... Amusement park? No, that's Florida. Mm. That's Texas. New York. Hmm. Hold on. What was this? What was this called? Uh, Clearwater Park. Um. Wait, is this Virginia? Or is this... I thought it was Pennsylvania, but this might be Virginia. Oh, it is Virginia. Uh, Virginia. Uh, Clearwater Park is an unincorporated community in Allegheny County, Virginia, United States. Uh, yeah, sure, but that's not that helpful. Mm, hold on. Oh, is that... I'm not sure if I spelled that right. Um, no, I don't think that's... One second. Ah, hmm, hold on. Jackson River, there we go. Virginia.org. <laughs> Uh, canoes, kayaks, doesn't go into the name. Why doesn't it go into the name? Anyway. Unfortunate. It's probably a reference, but it might not be. Hmm. Anyway. Um, sorry, I got sidetracked. But yeah, I think that this is realistic enough. Imagine Petticoat Junction didn't have a website, but it's parking lotted. <laughs> Search for the town on maps in the Wikipedia article. Hmm. Ah, yes, Virginia. Alright, search for the town on maps in the, of the Wikipedia article. Uh, I don't think that's necessary. At this point, um, yes, Virginia, the organization. Oh, right, that's all. Would you have mailboxes? Maybe, maybe, not not yet. Um, I'm to be Petico Junction filming location Sierra Railroad, Jamestown, California. <laughs> Hello, Code Monkey, welcome. Who knows if that is a complete list, though? Who knows? Or maybe the Nay, the place I'm in Virginia is just a reference, nothing more. Uh, oh yes, we haven't painted any of this area yet. Um, okay. Uh, let's do a little. Let's do a little bit of that, and then actually that's the wrong texture. 
Uh, how are things going with you then? Still the wrong texture, one second. Uh, there we go. Finally got the right one. <laughs> I should have really done this before painting in the gravel underneath the road, but I suppose it doesn't matter that much. Key bindings are so helpful in trains. Mm -hmm. Okay. And yeah, I think uh, finishing to paint this little bit of grass is probably the last thing we're going to do uh, this stream, aside from taking a thumbnail and stuff like that, of course. Because we are about to hit the 11 o'clock mark. Which you can tell by Code Monkey showing up. Oh right, I did have a few fields on this bit. Actually, yeah, I did have a couple of fields here. Hmm. I might add a few of those along the stretch as well, but we'll have to play around with that next time, I think. Um, what I've recently found to be really helpful when trying to grab an object that's largely obscured by another object is to hover over the area with a get tool G because it says the object name. If the right name shows up, hit M and grab it. Platfield plays a carrots. <laughs> that's actually a good tip. You should make a tutorial video with tips and tricks and put that in it. Can go. <laughs> yeah, it'd be only half a minute long. A lot can happen in 30 seconds. A lot does happen in 30 seconds. And that's counting my intro and outro. <laughs> You could carve a niche on YouTube shorts doing that. <laughs> yeah. He could. Although, I'm still not sure what uh, YouTube's grand plan is behind making this whole uh, legwear based thing. Like, I mean, what if people want to put stuff on there that has to do with skirts, for example, or blue jeans or stuff like that? Is it just that the CEO of YouTube really likes shorts and found them to be underappreciated on the internet or something like that? Anyway. I think that's probably uh, good enough for now. And then next time, actually, hold on. No, I need, I want that little hill outcropping there to be a bit darker. Like that, I think. That's, I think, gonna be better. Yes, that looks much better. Um. Actually, let's get a thumbnail and then I will read chat. Uh, 
Uh, well, <laughs> most of what we did today is place forest, so... I don't really want to get the exact same thumbnail that I did last time. Actually, maybe if I zoomed out that might be a bit more useful this time around. Hmm. Or maybe not. We'll see. Hmm. I wanted to load the objects in the distance. If I set this up to like... Oop, that doesn't... One second. Is that going to load the objects? Yes, and it's also... Ah, it's also going to load the mountains in the distance. Nice. Although, I may, yeah, we'll have to fill in some of these areas. And that looks quite nice. Uh, actually, let's see what it would look like if I were to change the time of day a little bit. Ah, the UI isn't showing up. Um, hold on, let's try that again. Still no. Okay, um, is this UI showing up? Yes. Is this UI now showing up? No. Ah, I think it might still be loading in assets because of the long render distance. That might be the issue. Maybe it's running out of memory or something like that, which is not a good sign. So I'm going to turn down the render distance again before it runs out of memory or something like that. So... I know I could, but I don't want to push things. I don't want it to crash. So I think that's good. Um, plus, we've already gone a few minutes over time. Uh, right. An idea, for sure. But, uh, hold on. Uh, yeah, see, that's what I want to avoid. Trains is frozen, now that I tried to quit it. Let's see if I relaunch it. Will it go into database repair or not? The answer is no, surprisingly. Hmm. Uh, anyway, um, one second, let me just quickly export. Just so I don't forget. There we go, export to CDP. There we are. Right. Um... Actually, I'll deal with that later. I'll deal with that later. One second. Well, let me just finish this first. Mm. Yeah, sure, but I don't really like the YouTube shorts. Like how you can't skip through the videos, neither forward nor backward, and so they're just more finicky to use. Yes, plus the um, portrait format I find really annoying on a widescreen, or well, on a desktop, basically. Because... Uh, it's just, it feels like I'm using a port of a mobile phone thing, which it's just, you're not using so much space. So, yeah. I guess YouTube cards. What's next? YouTube Tapestry? Ooh, that was a good episode of TNG. Tapestry. That was a really good one. That was the one with Q, where uh, Picard died and Q uh, basically showed him a version of the afterlife where he was and Picard said that he wanted a second chance uh, when Q offered and he accepted it and said well uh, yeah might have done that thing because the, th the thing that killed him was his mechanical heart and so if only he hadn't gone if only he hadn't been so um, foolish as a cadet and as if only he hadn't tried to fight that Nausicaan in the academy, he would have survived. And then Q shows him uh, his life if he had not done that, if he had chosen to be a coward, basically. And so in that, we explore the character of Picard in a totally different uh, light. 
totally basically the total opposite someone who doesn't stand up for himself someone who has never done anything noteworthy in his life and how it ends is also quite good and yes i'm glad you brought it up kango get a stop sign on it um love it you can still change the time of day even if it doesn't show up i know what worked doing that never crashed crashed before but i wanted to close it as quickly as possible that was the thing that i wanted to do because i realized that with that long render distance plus streaming plus the ui not loading I was thinking that I, I suspected it was running out of memory and it ended up freezing anyway. So maybe I was even a little bit too slow on that. In TS you might get a low memory warning when the Google overlay stops loading or it will get straight to crashing. Ah, ah, uh, yes, the portrait you could guess the shorts are more for mobile. Mm. Oh, don't remember TNG tapestry. Picard, if only I had a heart. Ah yes, I got you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But also with the the shorts, I also another thing that I really don't like about them is that they clutter up the videos on channels that have uh, regular video uploads, like of a longer length. Then. It's so easy to record a short on a mobile phone and upload it to the channel, which is what they're for. So you can have these little clips on there. But they get intermixed with all the other videos. So you've got a regular video upload, then you've got like 10 shorts, and then you've got another regular video upload if they're maybe like, I don't know, a week or two weeks apart or something like that. Well, maybe, maybe a few days or a week apart. And so they're so spread out with all these other things in between that are not the reason why I'm watching the channel or, or looking for something on the channel because I'm looking for the videos, not just little tiny clips of stuff. Um, which is just how I use YouTube. Maybe other people use it differently. I don't know. It just makes it so much more annoying to find stuff, especially if you're scrolling down to find a specific video. Uh, if you don't remember what it's called. If there was a toggle where you could switch between them, that would make it less annoying, but that's not the case. Um, I just meant, like, in three seconds, click the non-display clock, make it morning still had and screenshot. I know what you mean, but I didn't really want to um, go with that. I just wanted to have it done as quickly as possible. Not had any issues with it myself. Yeah, there are a few channels that do do this quite a lot, and that is annoying. Anyway, good night. Bye bye. Thanks for jo thanks for joining, and this stream will be uploaded to YouTube, not as a short, mind you. Bye bye. Good seeing you again, Code Monkey as well. Bye.